Hey friends, happy Sunday and welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor. I'm a stay-at-home wife and mom and I share What's for Dinner videos just like this every Sunday to hopefully give you some new meal ideas and to motivate you to cook more for your family. We tried quite a few new recipes this week. We had some really good ones and we even had a fail um, and I can't wait to share them with you today. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Friday night we had these barbecue pulled pork roll-ups. I've made stuff similar to this in the past, but I don't think I've ever made this specific recipe this exact way. So I am starting off with some pork. This isn't actually pulled pork. This was leftover from the ribs. If you remember last week, I had some spare ribs on the like side of the spare ribs. There's like a big hunk of meat that you can cut off that's not actually part of the ribs. So I shredded that up, added some barbecue sauce to it, um, and then I took my scissors and kind of chopped it up even more as so they were like really small pieces of pork and I'm going to use that for these roll-ups. Then I used some crescent rolls. You could just do one tube if you wanted to but I had enough meat to do two packs of crescent rolls so that's what I did. I just spread a little bit of that barbecue pork mixture on each crescent roll and then I'm going to top it with some cheese. I think in the past I've done like string cheese and sliced cheese but this specific recipe that I looked at was using string cheese or like cheese sticks so I had some cheddar cheese sticks in my fridge and I was like perfect that makes it super easy and like it's not as messy as like sprinkling cheese and then you get it everywhere so I just topped each little roll up with half of a stick of some cheddar cheese sticks and then I just rolled these up Then these went in the oven at 350 for 10 to 15 minutes until the dough is like nice and brown and cooked all the way through. For me, I think that took about 15 minutes. And then with this, we just had some salad and fresh veggies. And I was keeping it super simple this night. We all ate on paper plates because I didn't want a bunch of dishes to wash. Saturday night, I made the TikTok feta pasta because I had some feta in the fridge that I wanted to use up. So if you haven't seen this before, you just take about 10 ounces of grape tomatoes, drizzle them with some olive oil, and then season it to your liking. This time I decided to add some of that crunchy chili onion stuff from Trader Joe's, and then I added a bunch of minced garlic and then some garlic powder because I like garlic, and then some Italian seasoning and some basil and some crushed red pepper and some salt and pepper, and then just give that all a good stir. And then I kind of like make a hole in the center and you add your feta cheese. Usually you would use like a block of feta, but what I had that I wanted to use up was some crumbled feta and it was also like the sun-dried tomato basil one. So I just added that to the center and then drizzled it with some more olive oil. And then that goes in the oven at 425 for about 45 minutes. And while that was cooking, I cooked up some pasta. I did some shell pasta in some salted water. And then before I drained it, I made sure to reserve about a cup of that pasta water just in case you want to thin out the sauce for your pasta. So after 45 minutes, this is what the tomatoes and the feta look like. And then you just go through and mash up all of those tomatoes and make like your sauce. And then you'll add this to your pasta. Most of the time I use a bigger casserole dish and then I can just add the pasta to the casserole dish. But this time I didn't. So I ended up adding this cheese and tomato sauce mixture to my pasta in the pot that I had cooked my pasta in and you just give everything a good stir make sure your pasta is nice and coated with that and then if you need to you can add in some of that pasta water but this time I did not need to add it. Thank you. 
to go with the TikTok feta pasta, I always do like some chicken or some steak like cooked in my cast iron pan. So this time I did chicken and I just season it on both sides with some of the Badia Complete and some Tony's Creole seasoning. And then if you've been here a while, you know how I cook my chicken in the cast iron pan. Do a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter and get my chicken in that pan while it's nice and hot and cook it on each side for about five to six minutes get a nice good sear on either side and then if your chicken isn't all the way cooked through at that point i usually turn the heat down to like a medium low and just let it continue to cook until the chicken is all the way through you want to make sure it reaches the proper internal temperature but Cooking it on like the medium high heat for the first like five to six minutes per side gets you a nice crispy sear on the outside and it is delicious. So to go with our chicken and our feta pasta, we also had a can of green beans on the side and this was delicious. Sunday night was a simple family favorite, spaghetti super easy to put together didn't even show me cooking it we had it over angel hair pasta this night because aldi hadn't had any spaghetti for like two weeks now and i had angel hair on hand so i was like whatever we're just gonna use that and we didn't have anything with it this night i did not feel like putting together salad and i had forgotten to take the garlic bread out of the freezer so we just did that Next, we had this easy, cheesy barbecue Little Smoky casserole. I had bought some Little Smokies about a month ago, probably at Kroger on Markdown. And I know you can make like pigs in a blanket with it or make them in the crock pot with like barbecue sauce and whatnot. But I wanted to find something new, a new way to use them. Um, it's just, they're just not something that I cook with often. I feel like most people don't. But I decided to try this recipe. Starting off, taking one can of biscuits and we're gonna put it in a greased casserole dish and kind of press them down to fill in the sides and the bottom of the pan. And then you put it in the oven at 350 for 10 minutes just to kind of par bake the biscuits. Then while those are baking, I took my little smokies and I cut them into thirds. And then I added those into a pot on the stove with some barbecue sauce and just let them simmer over a medium heat while my biscuits cooked. After 10 minutes, I pulled the biscuits out of the oven and then I poured the little smokies and barbecue sauce over the top of them. And then I topped it with about a cup and a half of shredded cheddar cheese. And then this went back in the oven at 350 for 15 minutes. So this was pretty good. I wouldn't say it's like a favorite for me, but it was definitely a favorite for the kids. They loved it. So maybe your kids would like this, especially if they're kind of picky eaters. I feel like you could also just use like cut up hot dogs or cut up smoked sausage in this and it would work just as well. Um, so if you just want to try something new, I say give it a shot. Um, the flavors all worked well together. It was really good. Um, just not like something I'm going to make over and over, like some, not something I'm going to crave. And to go with it, we just had a salad, which I know we have salads often. I actually got a comment recently, like, you don't have to say it. We know you're having a salad. Um, but that's like something that happens more for my family in the spring and summer. Like salads are just an easy side. You don't have to heat up more food. Um, and we all pretty much like it. Lily doesn't really like salad, but she likes like the things that go on a salad. Um, but in the like more like cooler months, we tend to cook more sides. I also just like to keep sides simple. It's not something that I like to try a lot of new things with sides. I like to like try new things with the main dish and keep the sides pretty simple. So that's why we tend to eat a lot of salads. Tuesday night we had an enchilada bake. This recipe is actually in a video on my channel like from way before I was even doing what's for dinners. It's been a family favorite for a very long time but here in the past few years I haven't liked flour tortillas as much especially like in a dish like this. I've been doing like corn tortillas more. I just like the flavor of them better but I never tried this specific recipe with corn tortillas until today. Um, I just really wanted that enchilada bake. I wanted enchiladas without 
the re the work of like rolling them all up. So to get started on this, I am just browning up one pound of ground beef with some taco seasoning. And then when that's all cooked through, uh, you can drain the grease if you have some. Mine didn't have a lot of grease, so I didn't need to drain it. And then you just add in one can of Rotel, like the tomatoes and green chilies, and let that continue to cook over medium heat. Also add in more taco seasoning and just let that continue to cook over medium heat until all of your water is cooked out of it. While my grandma was cooking, I worked on frying up some corn tortillas. So I just did that in a little bit of oil in my cast iron pan. You just cook it for a couple of seconds on either side and then drain them on paper towels. To assemble a casserole, I just start by greasing my casserole dish and then I lay in four of the corn tortillas. Then on top of that, I add in half of the ground beef, top that with some shredded cheese. I did cheddar and a little bit of taco blend that I had in the fridge and then drizzle on a little bit of enchilada sauce then you do another layer of the tortillas the other half of the meat some more cheese a little bit more enchilada sauce and then end with some more of the tortillas the rest of the enchilada sauce can and some cheddar cheese and then this goes in the oven at 350 for about 25 minutes until it's all nice and melted and bubbly to serve this i just cut it up and then we like to top it with some stuff i did some lettuce some taco bell like mild sauce some sour cream and then some avocado Elijah did lettuce and the Taco Bell sauce, and Lily did avocado and the Taco Bell sauce. And Andy just likes to top his with a bunch of salsa. This was really good, way better than I remember it being with the flour tortillas, but if flour tortillas are more your thing, you can definitely make it with flour tortillas instead, but I feel like it's just so much better with corn. So if you like corn, please do it with corn because it's really, really good. Wednesday night we had these little chicken pot pie muffins which actually turned out to be a fail for my family but I do think this recipe has potential so I'm going to show it to you anyway. So I'm starting off with two cans of chicken that I drained. This is not the problem with the recipe although you could use rotisserie chicken or some shredded cooked chicken that you already have on hand. And then I added in one can of cream of chicken soup some salt and pepper, some dried rosemary, some dried thyme, some garlic powder, and some onion powder. And I mix it all together really well and like broke apart my chicken. And then I'm gonna add in a 10 ounce bag of frozen and mixed vegetables, but I did cook these in the microwave first. I steamed them in the bag and then I added them in. Now, my family does not really like frozen mixed vegetables. They eat it in my fried rice fine, but whenever I use it in anything else, it, they just never like it. I don't know what it is about frozen mixed vegetables that we just do not care for in like any other recipe, but my fried rice, I, I just, I don't know what it is. So I should have known not to use it in this. And I think that's mostly where the recipe failed for my family is the fact that I use frozen mixed veggies. So if I try this again, I would use canned mixed veggies instead of the frozen ones. Um, Cause I think that's most of the problem. But I also think I use a little bit too much thyme because I had dried thyme leaves instead of like ground thyme. Um, so I don't know if that's like stronger, but the flavor of the time was just like too much even for me. And so the kids ended up eating a ham and cheese sandwich and I had a bowl of cereal later because we just did not find these very good. But, um, I think if you adjust the seasoning and like use canned vegetables or whatever your family likes, I think that this recipe definitely has potential. So once I had the chicken mixture all mixed together, I took two cans of biscuits and we're going to stick them in muffin cups and just like press them down so they form little cups that we can put the chicken mixture into. I only have one muffin pan though, so I had like four extra biscuits and I ended up also having like extra filling. So I took those biscuits and pulled them apart and like stuffed the stuffing, like the meat mixture into there and like sealed it so they were like little tiny pies. Um, cause I had extra stuff. 
So I think you could make this recipe either way. You could have little muffin cups or a little tiny chicken pot pies. So here's what they looked like when they came out of the oven. And as Andy said, they look really pretty. They just don't taste the best. <laughs> We all tried, but we just did not like it. We had salad on the side with this. And then, as I said, nobody really cared for it. So Andy and I had cereal and the kids had ham and cheese for dinner. <laughs> Thursday, we had cube steak and gravy made in the crock pot over some egg noodles. So I got this started pretty late in the day because I actually forgot to start dinner. But luckily, this cooked pretty fast on high. So in my crock pot, I'm mixing together two cans of cream of chicken soup. If you like mushrooms, you could do cream of mushroom soup. I do not like mushrooms. So then I added in one package of the Lipton onion soup mix and then some garlic powder, lots of black pepper, and then I'm going to add in the Trader Joe's umami seasoning. It's made with like mushrooms because mushrooms give you the umami flavor. I just don't like the texture of mushrooms. So that's why I don't, don't do mushrooms. But I added that in since I'm not doing the cream of mushroom and I thought it would add in some good flavor. But if you don't have it, you could totally leave it out. And then I added in one cup of beef broth and then whisked everything together really well to try to break apart that cream of chicken soup. And once I had that all mixed together really well, I added in my cube steaks. I did four pieces of cube steak and I just dipped them down in that gravy mixture and made sure that they were all all coated with it and then I put the lid on this and let it cook on high for about four hours after four hours this is what it looked like and I just went in and removed the cube steaks what I like about this is that they stayed like in one solid piece yet they were super tender and you could just like cut it with a fork but they were easy to like lift up out of the gravy and then I whisked together a little bit of a cornstarch slurry to thicken this so it's more gravy like I didn't add the whole thing in at once I just did a little bit of it whisked it in until I had the consistency of gravy that I wanted and then I put a lid on this and just let it sit while I made some egg noodles so I just made up a bag of egg noodles and then we served the gravy and the cube steak over top of that with a can of peas on the side this was delicious definitely will make this again super easy to come home to minimal like work like at the end of cooking, which is really great for me on nights when we have martial arts, not a lot of things to do once I get home. And that is going to be it for this week's What's for Dinner. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that you got some new meal ideas. If you plan on trying any of these recipes, let me know which ones in the comments down below. And also let me know if you made it all the way to the end. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.